yeah uh, for the event events they are the communication method from the la view layer to the logic layer we have different characteristics for events first of all the user's behavior can be fed back to the logic layer for processing. And events can be bound to the component. When, we when the trigger event is reached, the corresponding event processing function in the logic layer will be executed. Also, objects can carry additional information such as ID, data site, touch it. Yeah, you see, we have these characteristics for events. We have some, uh, yeah, some methods to use event. And you see here how the event is used. First, we need to bind an event handler function to the component to the Weixin ML page. Here we have an example, and this code indicates that a touch click event is bound to the button, and the custom function my type will be executed after the finger is touched. Among them, here, we have an additional attribute of the event. It can be customized by the by us. Okay, you can see it. Mm. Okay, we'll try. We are put it also in demo. Yeah, we can download. Uh, Uh, yeah, event button, we set the ID of um, my button. Then we need to find an event find tab. Oh, we call it my type. And data. Um, my data, we set it as a good afternoon. And we put something here, like button component. Okay, like this. So you see here, we have founded a tap event. When we tap, tap this button, it will execute this function my tab function. So we need to define this my tab function in JS file. In data, yeah, you see in JS file, we need to define this function. Like change data, we need to define my type. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, we put it like this, an event, then we console log, we print it out in the console, this event, yeah, you see the when we execute it, yeah, oh, it's a little slow. Oh, we have earlier. So, uh, it fell. Demo JS. Unexpected token. 39. Oh, yeah. You see, I usually forgot this one. I usually forget it. Um, mm, sorry. And you too, you need to pay attention to this 
small dot. Let's see it together. Now it's okay. You see, we have already a button here. Yeah, and pay attention to this console. When we type it, a message is here. Oh yeah. Okay, you see a message is checked out. Have you seen it? We have the type. Mm, yeah, the type is, yeah, the type is a tab. We have the time step, current target here. We have, uh, yeah, when we open it, oh, I'm sorry. Current target, we have ID, data site. Data site ID of site, etc. We have the detail. Yeah, the detail. Oh, we have touches, etc. And you see, we have the detail information of this button. Yeah, so you see here we have given our an example of event. Yeah, you see, at, uh, here we say we must find an event handler. Then we need to add a function with the same name. That means we need to define the bind function to the corresponding JS file. If the function does not exist, an error will be reported when triggered. When we run the code and then touch and click the button, the console output content will be shown like we, what we have seen before. When we expand the arrow in front of the output content to view the details. After sorting, the selected information is shown here on the right. For example, if we want to get the data value in here, data mine and data mine, we can describe it like this. Yeah, so we can use this information for later code writing. And we have the event classification. We can divide events into bubbling events and non-bubbling events. And these events are explained like this. For bubbling in events, bubbling in events, when an event on a component is triggered, the event will be passed to the parent, to the, to the parent node. For non-bubbling event, or an event or co component is triggered, the event will not be passed to the parent node. Yeah. You see here, we have a list of bubbling events supported in Waiting ML. The custom events of other components, except the table, are non bubble events unless otherwise stated, such as the submission event of the form, the input event of the input bar, box input, et cetera. Yeah, okay, here you see we have different event, touch start, touch move, touch cancel, tap, we have already seen it with our example. Long press, long tap, transitioned, animation start, animation iteration, animation end, catch force change. And you see we have different types. P 
Yeah, for later we have event binding and bubbling. The writing method of event binding is the same as the attribute description of the component. In this form, uh, yeah, and it is explained like this. For key, it start it is start uh, yeah it starts with bind or catch, and then follow the type of event such as bind tag, catch touch start, and since the basic library version this version a colon can be immediately followed by bind and catch, and its meaning remains the same. Yeah, like. Find tab, catch, touch, start. Another is value. It is a string and a function with the same name needs to be defined in the corresponding page. And the difference between bind and the catch events is that bind event binding does not prevent bubbling events from bubbling upwards. Catch event binding can prevent bubbling events from bubbling upwards. So you see, we have difference between bind and catch events. Yeah, here we have examples here. Yeah, you see in this example, we have three view components, A, B, C. A contains B and B contains C. At this time, if we click component C, tab three will be triggered. And then the tab event will bubble up to the parent node view B, causing tab two to be triggered. However, because component B uses catch tab, it prevents the tab event from bubbling. If we click component B, tab two will be triggered. And if we click component A, tab one will be triggered. That's why here you see here we have bubbling event, it can be, mm, transfer to here, then here we have bubbling stopped, so we will not bubble up later. Then we have event capture. Since the basic library version, touch events support the capture phase, which can capture the event before the bubbling event of the component is triggered, making it impossible to bubbling. And the sequence of events in the capture phase is completely opposite to the bubbling phase, which captures from the outside to the inside. Cap event capture is written in the form of capture bind. I'll catch, I'll capture catch key value. And it is explained like here. Capture bind, capture events before the bubbling phase, capture catch, capture events before the bubbling phase and cancel the bubbling phase and interrupt capture. And we have the type of event such as taps, touch, start, etc. but it can only be a touch event. And value it is a string, we need to define a function with the same name in the corresponding page. For example, here we have two view components, A and B. If we replace capture bind in this line of yeah with capture catch only tap two will be triggered and then the capture will be interrupted and the bubbling phase will be canceled as we have used capture here 
yeah, he, he, this is the use of a capture. And we have uh, the event objects. Yeah, event objects can be divided into base event, custom event, and patch event. You see here. Mm, yeah, in these three tables, we have attributes, type, nodes for different types of event objects. You see the touch event in the canvas component cannot bubble. So there is no current target property. And base event object, um, yeah, we have target and the current target, they have same parameters it's shown here yeah um we have id tag name data site yeah target and current target attributes in the basic event contain the same parameters also the data site can only accept uh, the transfer form of this one, for example, here, the collection obtained by data site after the, the event is triggered is test hello. If describing multiple words connected with this symbol, they will be forced to be converted to camel case notation. It is also known as camel notation, which is characterized by the fact that the first word is all lowercase and each subsequent word has, the, has only the first letter of case, of the case. The collection obtained by data site after the event is triggered is my test, hello. Yeah, you can see this an example. If there are several, yeah, there are upper case, case letters in the same word, they will be forced to, forced to convert it to lower case letters. For example, here, the collection obtained by data science after Event is triggered is like this. We have detailed event objects. Oh, we have the touch it's of the touch event object. Yeah, we see that it is an array in which each element is a separate touched object, which represents the touch point currently staying on the screen. We have different attributes here, like identifier page X, page Y, client X, client Y. We have also some the um yeah touches which are carried in the canvas touch event. It is an array formed by the canvas touch object, and the attributes are shown here. The change touches attribute is exactly the same as touches, which means the touch points that have changed, such as changing from nothing to being touch start. Position changing, touch move, and changing from being to nothing, touch and touch cancel. 
here we have these attributes identifier x y then for code wishing ml provide two file citations citation methods import include import many programs can use the template type to define the template in the target file in advance and then use the import tag to reference the content in the template on the current page. Here, for example, we use template in the file to define a template code block named template 01. Then we use import in the home page index to reference this, yeah, this template, and then we, uh, yeah, to reference this uh, wishing ML, and then we can use the template TM um, template one in which uh, in template wishing ML. Yeah, you see. Um, here, um, yeah, we can use it still here. In template, yeah, we take a demo wishing ML as example. Um, yeah. We define a template. Template name. Um, we give it a name temp one one. Then uh, we ask it to show something. Text another component. Text. Yeah, this one. Then in the um yeah <laughs> here we can you see here we have defined the, the template this template in demo wishing ml. And now we can refer it or we can use this import, this template by import. Um, for example, here in index. Um, what can we put in index? We need at first to import import the page um demo waiting waiting ml then we use template okay, use it R1 data you, you you remember in template we have set okay it's better to use this one um we have set text um so we can use i at the value of this one You see, then we can see, uh, you see here, we have just the two instructions. The first one is to import demo wishing ML. And the second one is to say, we use its template and we initialize the data as this value. 
the data text. And this template is yeah defined in demo x um demo racing ml. Now we will compare it. Normally it should be in index here. Mm -mm. Index wasting ML. Yeah, normally it's here. It is no show here. We have used this template. This template is defined in this. Okay, I'll try this one to see if it works or not. Text. Hi. Yeah, we will see. Um, we come back to this one. Oh, yeah. It is a, sorry. Okay, I will put it here. It is shown here, but we cannot see it very clearly here as we have the, yeah, you see it is shown here. Here means we can use different, yeah, we can use templates of other pages uh, com more complicated here, it should be noted that import has the concept of scope. That is only the template defined by the target file will be referenced. And the third party template referenced by import in the target file will, be not, will not be referenced. You see here, we have a template A, template, yeah, template B, we have imported the template A, um, yeah, page A, and, oh, it cannot be seen here. I need to put it, but it's very cloud. It's too cloud. You cannot see down here. I'm not sure if it is better, but yeah, we can. See, we may try. Mm -hmm. What's wrong? Okay, you see here we have template A. Simply, uh, it it defines a template for racing MLA, and for template B, it has imported this page, and it's we have set a template B for page C. We have imported page B. Then here. We can use template B, but not A. You see here, failed to reference template C must import A by itself. And for B, successfully copied the, temp the template. Um, the C page has imported B because import has the concept of scope. That is only the second, uh, only the template 
defined by the target. Yeah, um, only the template defined by the target file will be referenced. And the third party template referenced by import in the target file will not be referenced. Here, we have these, uh, yeah, these important things for have a, I think it is broken now. Oh yes, it's here. Then we have, uh, for code, uh, we have another way is to use include. We can use include to introduce the entire code of the target file, except template. It is equivalent to copying the code of the target file directly to the location of the include tag. For example, to make a unified header and footer for the page. We have this example. Um, okay, this one, I can also make an example here. You see, um, Yeah, okay, we don't need to act too much. You, you see, we have already, I'll delete this one. We have in demo. Demo wishing ML. We have already three, three pages. Demo, index, and logs. We can use them directly. How to use them? We can use include. Include, oh, sorry. Include, um, RC. okay, perhaps it's basically to do something like this. Oh, uh, for example, index. Oh yeah, it's be perhaps it's better to create two um two new pages, two new pages in this in this file as it uh else it may uh, be tall it may be flat okay it's, it doesn't matter index um, then index ma wishing ml this is one another one include but later you will see it will be too large this uh, locks this fell Logs wishing ML. Yeah, okay, we're trying. You see, it's in demo. Have you seen it? Here in demo page. Yes, Ashi. Yeah, thank you, Kaya. We have already, yeah, we have um, included 
index, uh, yeah, index page and the logs page here. That's why we can show their, uh, yeah, we can show their result here too. But it will make uh, make it very uh, noisy. So I'll put delete it and keep it clean. Okay. And in the next, okay, we'll have a break of 10 minutes. And next class, we'll continue with the Waiting SS SS fair. I will see your attendance where it might be. Mm, I see that we have two absences. Um, who? Hamruzaman and another one. And Shibli, yeah? Hamruzaman and Shibli? Not here? Okay. Have a, um, yeah, have a break of 10 minutes, please. Okay, we are back. Um, yeah, so we are going to talk about the Wei Xing SS Fair. It is the full name of, this is Wei Xing Style Sheets. It, yeah, it, it is used to describe Weixing ML component styles, like size, color, border, effect, etc. In order to adapt to the majority of front-end developers, Weixing SS has most of the features of CSS. At the same time, in order to be more suitable for the development of WeChat applets, WeCSS has expanded and modified CSS. Compared with CSS, WeCSS autonomous features include size unit and style import. You see here, oh, oh, oh. Hey, what's wrong with it? I have died in... Chinese exchange. I made it in English now. Sorry, perhaps I have I have made a mistake here. I'll see again. Normally I have made it in. One hundred and one, two, one hundred and two. Can I just wait a moment, please? I have I haven't uploaded one thing. That's why it is a uh, we have a uh, error here. I need to set it. Yeah, do you have you already used the CSS? Hmm? Yes, Ashi. Okay, thank you, Kaya. Uh, if you have already used it, normally it will uh, be not very difficult for you. Yeah. Sorry, I have made it um, in Chinese for later ones. Uh, yeah, because I have died and I forgot to update it later. It's here. I'll replace it, put it 
uh, put it the desk, the desk. Uh, put it on the desk. Okay, save to replace it. And then we have got the correct one. Yeah, you see here we were talking about waiting access. Yeah. Oh, that's what we did. Yeah, it's here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we have some difference with CSS as Weixian SS autonomously uh, autonomous features include size unit and style import. We can see here we have different measurement unit. Here we use a new size unit RPX. We call it responsive pixel. It can be adapted according to the one of the screen. And the principle is to disregard the original size of the device and uniformly stipulate that the screen size is 750 RPX. RPX is not a fixed value. The larger the screen, the larger the pixel corresponding to one RPX. For example, uh, yeah, with this machine, we have the screen wise like this, and there are 750 physical pixels in total. And then you see that 750 RPX is 375 pixel. It is 750 physical pixels. So one RPX, one RPX is a half pixel and it's one pix physical pixel. You can see other, I'm sorry. You can see here, have some notes. As iPhone 6 is a more con is more convenient for conversion, it is recommended that developers can use this device as a standard for visual draft. Uh, you see here, we have the conversion between RPX and PX. Um, yeah, no, it's not very difficult to use. Um, yeah, you just need to know what RPX, it corresponds to different sizes according to different devices. Here for style, we can use this kind of statement in the waiting as a style sheet to import the external style sheet. And this statement is followed by the relative price of the external style sheet that needs to be imported. And we use this symbol to indicate the end of the statement. For example, here we have a common style sheet code like this. And we can use sorry. And we can use this statement to reference it in any other style sheet. For example, yeah, we have a code like this. And then we can use red and blue style in HTML, in the corresponding HTML. Here we have some common attributes. It's just like CSS. Um, yeah, here we say in order to facilitate the understanding. Okay, in order to understanding, to, to facilitate the understanding of the sample code in this section, 
this table lists some common style attributes and the reference values. And we can express colors in different ways. Like here, we have listed four ways to express colors. RGB color, RGBA color, hexadecimal color, predefined color, etc. For inline style, the applet allows the use of style and class attributes to control the style of the components. Yeah, you see the style attribute is also called inline style, which can directly write style code into the first label of the component. This code means that the text in the current view component will turn red and the background will turn yellow. Here, we have some examples of inline style. We say that the applet allows the use of style and class attributes to control the style of the component. They also support dynamic style effects, such as this. Yeah, this is an uh, instruction. This code, it indicates that the text color in the component will be specified by the data color attribute of the page JS file. And the official rec recommendation is that developers try to avoid writing static styles into style. So as not to affect the rendering speed, if it is a static style, it can be written in a class uniformly. Here, we use, yeah, we can use the class attribute to specify style rules. And its attribute value is composed of one or more custom style class names. And multiple style class names are separated by spaces. Yeah, you see here in this example, we have defined two styles, style one, style two. And in view here, we, know, um, we mean that this component accept at the same time these two styles. Yeah, so perilous. it's later that I, I realize this example with you. Um, here, it means, for example, we define two styles in Weixin SSL here. Um, we define two styles, style one. Yeah, we set the color, right? And the style. Mm. Yeah, we set font size. say 20 pixels and then we set the weight set it as a bold yeah okay you see it's here like this now then in wasting ml um for example here you yeah it's better that i write it differently 
um, view class. Yeah, you see here, if we just put style one, oh, oh uh, style zero one, you see the effect, then we use test. Okay, here. Then we try to see the second case. Oh yeah, here, the second case we are at two stairs, stair one, stair two. And the third situation, we just put stair two. You will see it's quite different. Demo, it's here. Yeah, you see, have you seen it? The effect? Yes, I'll see. Thank you, Kaya. Yeah, that's why here we call we yeah we call this inline style. As yeah, in our same instruction, we have uh, called several styles, and this is our yeah, this is um assignment for today. You see, um, I'm sure if you can see it. Um, I have received one assignment of uh, last, yeah, uh, what we have talked before. No, it's not like this what I want. Okay, um, at first, maybe I will publish the assignment for today. Um, the assignment for today is to capture your project with inline styles. That's the line in our lecture. Yeah, it's very simple. Normally it's, you can, normally you can finish it in one, two minutes. Yeah. Okay. Here. Have you, oh, I'm sorry. Have you seen uh, the assignment for today? Yes, I have loved you. Okay, thank you, Kaya. Is it clear, the question? The, yes, is the it question? is. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you see, in fact, you can add this code or this uh, functionality to your previous project. Later, you will compose a big project. It's gradually, you can, you can do it. And for our assignment, uh, I give an example. Um, text or view, it's, it depends on you, uh, different. Um, it depends on you as it's diff you can use different components. What can you say? Um, we can use. As I have asked logical 
yeah, I have asked logical judgment. Then we can use uh, we seeing if um, yeah, we seeing if two plus three. Uh, mm, four. Yeah, see if uh, two plus three is four, then we can publish. Um, for example, uh, yeah, two plus three. And th then plus. Um, uh, like this. Yeah, okay, I know how, what can I do now. Two plus three um, equals two plus two plus three. Okay, we'll just test this one. You see, it's very, very simple, but you can do it more. Um, you can do it, you can do it very, how to say, you can do it uh, rightly. Uh, you can say, uh, yeah, you can give it, for example, here is a concatenation because here is concatenation between like this is basically you need to add this a I made a mistake I forgot it I forgot it If it is true, then I print it out. When I print it out, it is a string, a string and a string. Okay, string and a string. Can you see it like this? Three. Okay. Oh yeah, oh, sorry, I forgot it. Yeah, you see, it's like this. It's better to make it differently. Oh, say, two, two, Plus three okay. equals two plus three. Yeah. You can even write it, write something here. Um, we can write directly. Indeed. Have you seen it? It's, 
Yeah, here is a very, very simple question, a simple example. You can hear you have used a logical judgment. Yeah. Here you have used a logical judgment. You can use text or view component as you like. Then you have used a logical judgment. You have used this. Here is an addition. I'm sorry. Yeah. Here is the first plus, plus symbol is a addition function. Then here is a concatenation. Here is an addition. Yeah. Is it clear? Yes, Laoshi, it is to me. Thank you, yes, Kaya. Laoshi. Thank you, Saddam. Yeah. You see, it's not it's not difficult. Just use yeah, it's this one is a very, very simple example. You can use you use one one instruction and it is realized. And then this one, um, this assignment is quite easy too. Okay, have you seen it then? Yeah. Uh, yes, I have, she. pardon? Yes, love she, I have uh, changed yeah. my assignment too. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I have, uh, I have written the bike. Uh, because my yeah, um, my original idea is like this. But you can uh, surely you can have different examples. I, I have given a very simple one here, and this is for the previous, and this one is for our for current class. Yeah, I just changed mine too and submitted again. Okay, thank you, Roy. Yeah, here. We have talked about inline class style, and then we have the selector. Um, for the selector, we have the different selectors here. Oh yeah. Um, class ID element elements after before. Okay, you can see them. And we set, for example, here we update the wines of all view components on the current page to 100 RPX. We have, yeah, okay, here, just like global data or local data, the styles specified in the applet. Weixing SS style sheet can are divided into two categories according to their scope of action. We have global style, uh, is the style in app Weixing SS, which is applied, yeah, which is applied to every page. Then for partial or local uh, style, is that the style defined in the page Weixing SS file can only be applied to the corresponding page and we are overwritten the same selector in app weighting access. Uh, here, this one is called, yeah, it is applied to, for example, demo weighting access, logs demo, uh, logs weighting access, homepage or index weighting access. Yeah, these are global style. Then for we say that components are the basic units on Weixing ML pages. For example, buttons, pictures, text, etc. And on the mini program page, they are all rendered using components. Then we will see some basic layout method for flex model. We have some basic concepts. For example, flex layout. The template uses the flex model to improve page layout efficiently, effic yeah, efficiency. This is a flexible layout model. 
when the patient needs to adapt to different screen sizes and device taps, the model can ensure that the elements are in the right place. Here, um, yeah, you see, here we have some concepts like containers and items. In the flex layout, the component used to contain the content is called the container. And the component inside the container is called the, the item. The container allows nesting. For example, here, we have three view components, A, B, and C. For A and B, A is a container and B is a project. For B and C, A is, no, I'm sorry, B is a container and C is a project. Yeah, you see, we can have nesting. Then we have axis, the coordinate system of the flex layout is based on the, the point at the upper red left corner of the container as the origin and two coordinate axes to the right and the thumb from the origin. The default is a horizontal layout that is the horizontal direction is the main axis from left to right. And the vertical direction is the cross axis from top to down as shown here. We can use the style attribute flex direction column to swap the positions of the main axis and the cross axis as shown here. We have some attributes related to flex layout model, and they can be divided into container attributes and item attributes according to the types of their tags. Container attributes, they are used to specify the layout of the container to control the arrangement and alignment of the internal items. For the item properties, they are used to set the size, position, and alignment of the items inside the container. Here we have flex attributes. Container properties, they are used to specify the layout of the container to control the, the arrangement and alignment of the internal items. You see, we have attributes, explanation, default value, added valid values. And we have item properties, which are, which, which are used to set the size, position, and alignment of the, the items inside the container. Yeah, you see, we have different attributes, order, flex, shrink, flex, grow, flex, basis, Align self. Yeah. Um, here are some of them are very important. So it's better to see the, con uh, the explanations. With order, we can set the, the order of the items. Oh yeah, here perhaps here is better to uh, explain a little of this one too. For the flex direction is to see and uh, to set the item arrangement direction we uh, yeah by default it is by row we have other valid values like row inverse row reverse column column reverse for flex ripe is to set whether the item wraps default value is no ripe other valid va values are ripe wrap reverse for justify content is to set the alignment of items in the main axis direction the default value of this attribute is a flex start 
Other valid values are flex and center, space between, space around, space evenly. For the attribute align items is to set the horizontal alignment. The default value is stretch. We have other values like center, flex end, baseline, flex start. We have the attribute align content. The explanation for this attribute is that when arranging multiple rows, we set the alignment of the rows in the cross axis direction. The default value of this attribute is stretch. We have other valid values like flex start, center, flex end, space between, space around, and space evenly. Later for this, we have order. Yeah, here is for item properties. Just then we have seen the container properties. For the item con con properties, we have order to set the order of the items in on the main axis. Default value is zero. We have other integer values. We have the, the attribute flex shrink is to shrink items that overflow on the main axis. The default value is one. And we have other valid, uh, we have numbers at other valid values. We have the attribute flex grow is to expand, uh, is the expansion of projects that still have space in the main axis direction. Default value is zero and we have other valid values. We have the flex spaces to replace the items with add attributes. Default value is um, auto and other, we have other valid values like length. For the attributes flex, it is a comprehensive shorthand for the, the, those three properties, flex shrink, flex grow and flex spaces. The default value is num, and we have other valid values. Align self is to set the alignment of items on the cross on the cross axis in the row. We have different values uh, for by default it's author, and we can have flag start, flex end, center, baseline, stretch as other valid values. Yeah, you see here, we have an example. If the y and the head of the container component cannot be determined, but the internal items need to be vertically centered. Here we have the code. The role of these attributes will be explained in detail later. Um, okay, yeah. You see here in the container, we have, yeah, we use flex, flex layout. We use column as flex direction. It is, yeah, it, that means it is a vertical, the arrangement. Content are centered, contents are centered. Yeah, okay. We can try this one. Mm, perhaps it's better. Okay, I'll set it directly here. Or perhaps it's better that we use our navigator to load to another page. And yeah, maybe it's better. But here we have already too many things. Perhaps I'll put it well, there, where it's better here. For example, we use a we use a navigator. Navigator, yeah. Um, oh yeah, per, yeah. It's better that we create a new page at first. 
we create it in FJSON. Oh, oh, my page. Oh, yeah, if we have already paid. Yeah, okay. But I don't need it here. What I want to use is in here, we can create pages. Um, demo, we put it in the same directory. Uh, and what can we create? Flex app. Okay. That's all. Anomaly, yeah. No? There, uh, at least here we have shown it. Flex app documents um flex um yeah and then we come here to set our navigation we open tab is navigate then we use url to navigate to Pages, then demo, then flex. It normally is okay. Mm -hmm. Just a flex app. Yeah. Um, here, we need to get to here. And we make flex simple, simple example of flex. Okay. I just write it like this. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, it's here. We have simple flex of, okay, it's here now. Have you seen it? Simple example of flex. Yeah, when we arrive here, we'll put the example here. Um, in Weixin SS file, we set the container. We need to define uh, the fl flex display is flex, then flex direction. It is a column. Then we need justify content. We need it to be center. Yeah, and then we need to see it in Weixin ML. So how to see it? We put our, yeah, for example, view, um, class is container. And we will see. Yeah, click here. Oh, it's in this container, we had nothing, so it's not very clear. Um, we need to put things in it. For example, we need to put something, um, yeah. Last container here. What can we put?
view. Mm. View class. View. View one. And then we say you want here and we get that view two view class view two to here then we set these classes yeah and then we need to set this class in Weixing SS here, view one, for example, um, what to, we set the way, uh, no, is we set it at the uh, 100%. We can set the hat as for example, 300 RPX, we can set the background color. We set it as red. Um, we have a view two, same thing. To make it different, we change the value here. View two, we call it 10, for example, here we set it at 600. We set it at the green. Okay. And we will see. Yeah, have you seen it? Here, the, um, the effect of it. Is it okay? For yes, now she. Okay, thank you, Kaya. For the container, we have this. We have said it like this. It's column. It's center like this. If we um yeah, you see, if justify content, if we set it as uh, mm, uh, if we set it as a flex start, you see it will be different. Or, uh, yes, flex start or flex end. You normally this view two will come here. Yeah. A. No, it is not changed. Container view. From it is the container, and we have put it here. Normally, it should be here, and normally, it should be yours. It's wrong with date. I may need to put two containers to see the okay, yeah. Um, I may need to put two containers to see the, the effect, like here. If we put two, we'll see three, four, we'll see the difference. Next, here we say it is justify content flex end flex center. The main axis here, the main axis is this one. No, yeah, the 
normally the main axis is this one so it should be flat start is this one a justify content i forget that it's i forgot it's justify content normally it means this normally it means different items how it is displayed it is by this side this side or in the center justify oh yeah you see if we put here um how can i try it Mm, I can try it like this. Yeah, I know now. Uh, I'm sorry. I can try it like this. We have view two here. and we'll see of oh, maybe they, they, they will be line by line before you stretch um yeah okay i'll put it directly like this to see what's wrong with it mm. i have done it before but it doesn't more work now yeah i i will do it like here I will just do it. Um, for example, uh, yeah. If we put our item A with the Y's, I'll see if no, it should be. Sorry, sorry. It should be here. It should be. We need to set it here. Um, we have set view one, view two as wise. Oh yeah, perhaps, perhaps it's better that I said set it with a mm, not percentage. A px, a px. Yeah, and here I set it just to ten px. I'll see it. Mm -hmm. Okay, we put it. Yeah, it is in line because I have put it like this, but it's better that I put it. Oh, I know. Oh, I know what, what what's the problem? Because I have set it flex direction here. Column, I have set it as column. If I set it as a row, it will change. Oh, I see the difference. Oh, la, la. You see here. Here, it's changed. View, oh, but we cannot see it here. It is depend on divide, different devices. Ah, yeah, I'm sorry. I have put it like this. It's not good. It's not a good way. Start here. You see, I have set it as a flex end and everything comes to the until the end. If I set it as a flex start, it will change. You see, with the flex start, uh, they will go here, this side. Have you seen it? If I put it as a center, they will be in the center.
Is it clear? The effect? Yes, Thank yes, you, Sashi. Lotion. Yes, clear. Thank you, Saddam. Yeah. So um, you see here, we, yeah, what I have ignored is the, the flex direction. If I have set it as colon, then I cannot test this function. Okay. Okay, Lashi, okay. Thank you. So we, uh, Shibli and uh, Kamruzama are not, not here. Yeah, okay. I have published the, the assignment via Chaosin platform. Um, please check it and submit on time. Okay. Okay, Lashi. Thank you, Farso. Uh, we will stop here. Have a good time and see you next week. Bye bye. Bye, Lao Bye, Lao Bye. Bye. -bye.